Let's talk a little Peter Yawn. So the champ who had a very slow rise to a championship match. I mean, in all fairness, as young as he is at 26 years old, he was still 16 fights deep, 15 of which he won, and the one he lost was controversial, and that's the nicest way I can put it. I mean, that is an incredible career for a handsome young man that happens to geographically be in a part of the world that for the politics of the sport play into his favor. I mean, it's a very slow rise. This guy's been red hot. In the last two days, okay, let me let me break down what Peter Yawn has done in the last 48 hours. Cody Garbrandt is in active talks right now to go down to 125 and take on Figueredo. I mean, look, that fight's done, right? Is there anybody you want to see fight Figueredo more than Cody Garbrandt? No, oh, of course not. But Cody Garbrandt and Yawn had some kind of a backstage dust-up The night that Yawn beat Uriah Faber, it was caught on cameras backstage like iPhone footage. Something happened. I watched it two or three times. I couldn't fully hear. Yawn hasn't let that go. And Yawn is now coming after Cody Garbrandt and saying, you're you're all bark and no bite. As soon as you're given an opportunity, you're now going to run away. Okay, fine. Great line. Like it. No problem with it. Not very many people go after Cody Garbrandt. Something different. We always want to look when we're talking about marketing for this sport, making yourself stand out. We always want to talk about what are you doing different? That's different. Nobody goes after Cody. He's going after Cody. Okay. Yeah, that's today. Yesterday, Jan went after Andre Orlovsky. I have the foggiest idea what this is about or where this came from, but Jan went after Andre. That's very compelling as well. And when I talk about the slow rise of Jan, a lot of it was because he wasn't able to stand out and he just wasn't interesting. If you want to have fans that can beat the drum and yell from the rooftops on your behalf as you're running a campaign as a candidate that would like to be a title challenger, It's very interesting how you go about doing that because you have to make yourself interesting to make people come along the journey. For the ups, the downs, the sideways, the stubbing of the toe, and the raising of the hand, you need a base to come along the journey with you, which is where becoming interesting becomes so important. Jan wasn't interesting. Jan's very interesting now. I'm very interested in him. Very. And when you have somebody that has absolutely no rules to their venom. They have no code whatsoever. I'm going to stand here alone. Come and get it. It's very rare, but it's very valuable. In the sport of MMA right now, we have one guy like that. His name is Conor McGregor. Conor does not matter what weight class you are. Conor doesn't matter what sport you do. He doesn't matter if you're a good guy or a bad guy. You could be Uriah Faber or you could be Nate Diaz. You could be a 145-pounder you could be a 170-pounder. You could be a pugilist from Nevada that's never been beaten in your sport. He doesn't give a damn. You can see how valuable that is. I, the only other character that I could fully compare that to would be when Stone Cold Steve Austin bursted onto the scene, quit being Steve Austin, quit being Stunning Steve, and became Stone Cold. And it was very confusing and it was very problematic. You're either a good guy or a bad guy. That's the story of Hollywood. Every movie you've ever seen, every book ever written, every every script or manifest ever turned into a producer or director, you've got a good guy and you've got a bad guy. Professional wrestling was no different. You had a good guy and you had the bad guy. The bad guys like the other bad guys. The good guys like the other good guys. End of story. Move forward. Business is great. Stone Cold comes out. He hates everybody. He does not give a damn if you're a good guy or a bad guy. He stands alone. Now, this was problematic. As great as that is now, as cool as that was, as much as we have seen, it was an experiment that had never even been tried. And there was nobody more confused or more put out or more annoyed by all of this than the genius himself, Vince. Vince didn't know what to do with it. He goes, Steve, who am I going to book you against? I don't know if you're a good guy or a bad guy. You're standing over here on an island by yourself. Pick a team and let's move forward. We could do great things together, Stone Cold. Nope. Don't care if you're a good guy. Don't care if you're a bad guy. I am my own guy. Well, okay. So Vince comes back and goes, yeah, but Steve, 
This isn't about what you want to do or the character. It's about the manipulation of the emotions of the audience. They take our cues from us. Good guys wear white hats. Bad, guy, bad guys are wearing black hats. You're dressed in all black. And the crowd is cheering for you. They're conflicted and they're confused, which makes me conflicted and confused as to how to book you. Nope. Bring, bring me the heels, bring me the bad guy. Bring, bring me the baby faces. Any way you want to do it. And you see where that becomes something very special and valuable. But it's also something very unique. There is a tremendous courage in the way Connor did it. He didn't give a damn about anything except Ireland. And you could even make that a little bit smaller. He didn't care about anything except SBG Ireland. So now it's him versus the world. That's a compelling storyline. And I'm not suggesting for you that Jan is there yet. He had two good days. He called out Cody. Nobody calls out Cody. Calls out Cody. Good. Sign of bravery. He goes over after Orlovsky. I don't know what that stems from. If any of you have got the story, please share it with me. But he is on the cusp of doing something very unique. And if he's doing it from a heel standpoint, that's going to be fun. There's nothing more valuable than a cool heel. They just don't come along very often. There is nothing more bankable in the world of entertainment than a cool heel. Henry Cejudo would qualify as the other side of the coin, which was the good guy heel. He was the cool good guy. Henry did everything I'm telling you. He went after everybody in every division, continues to do it in retirement. Now he's even starting to go after other guys in other sports and other countries and other, other disciplines. Doesn't matter. He stands alone. He did it a little bit different. But I think you would agree, particularly bringing Henry and a guy who is credited accurately for saving a division. Nobody in the history of this sport gets that kind of credit. I mean, that's a lot. That's big praise. There's something to this, and I'm only laying the groundwork. We're going to follow Yawn. We're going to see his next move and the one after that. He's got a hold of the right tool. I fear that he's holding it. I fear that he's holding the right tool by the wrong end. But for the last 48 hours, he's done it right. 